Well, let's test drive time on this 1972 Dodge Challenger. After uh, checking everything out, came back 318, power steering, power brakes, aluminum radiator. She's quiet. Three speed. It's a little different, eh? Got the vinyl top, purple, black stripes. Test drive is coming your way. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video where I pick out flaws, chips, scratches, rust, and dents. We'll be gone over, and by the time this video's over, you'll know everything about the car. We do that so you know what you're getting. A lot of people buy cars from us out of state. And you know, it's a little bit hard to look at a car when you're eight hours away. With that being said, you'll know what you're getting. Check out maplemotors.com. You can get pre-approved with our finance, and you can check out the shipping rates, have it shipped straight to your house, and 100 detailed pictures. Not to mention, you can call and talk to us. We're all family. 615-822-4444. For now, it's about that time. Let's go for a ride. Before we take off, we look around the interiors and place bets on the horn. Do you think the horn works on this one? Coming across the dash. What we got? It's a cap. It's a cap overlay that somebody put on here. I used it myself. It definitely cleans things up, makes it look good. This one won't start unless you push the clutch in. Go ahead and check out the mileage tack. Checking everything out here. Give the give the radio a second. Turn signals not popping up on either side there. Wipers do work. Blower motor heater is working. I hear it. And interior. Overall, she's pretty clean. Headliner, missing the cap for the light. Horn, did you place your bats? Let's hit it. I would have said it worked, but I've been wrong a whole lot here lately. None of these horns have been working. Radio don't work either. Clock, nope. Let's hit the road, see what else we can find. All right, guys, here we go. We're gonna take off down the road. We're also gonna go get some gas, cause I don't wanna run out. Now let's see how she rides and drives. Wait on a little bit of traffic to go by. The power steering pump's a little iffy on this one. Making some whining noise. So yeah, our power steering pump is whining. And it's stiff right now. I know they've checked the fluid in these things, so I'm sure it's full. That pump is making some noise. Here we go. It's just a three speed, so we just got three gears there. This is gonna be an in-town cruiser. It's pretty straight going down the road. The steering is tight. My brakes feel good. not working on this one so our mileage is not going to turn over we'll just always be at 92899 it's not going to change if the odometer i mean if the speedometer is not working the odometer is not going to work that's just how it is now our gas gauge is reading e so we do need to stop get a little bit of fuel we'll check and see if the gas gauge works our oil pressure gauge is not really moving either watching some of these gauges here. I'm going to rev it up. Yeah, our oil pressure gauge is not moving at all. Alternator gauge is. Temp gauge isn't either. I don't know how much I trust them old gauges. The 
clutch actually feels pretty good. It's not too bad. Say so we're getting ready to turn green here and then we'll pull into the gas station. checking all that stuff in the parking lot they weren't working tires are rubbing as soon as we went over that bump there the tires kind of rub so they're close to the edges there and it just sounds like it's in the back I'm gonna mess with my left turn signal oh so the connection on the turn signals is the issue it's flashing now I can see it cutting on I had this right one working, just using it driving down the road, and the connection's not working now, so it needs to be cleaned up on the turn signals. I don't want to yank on them too hard, mess anything up. All right, we're going to get some gas now, and I'll be back. Okay, we got some gas. As you can see, I had to turn around, but it was in the cab over here. 93 octane's all we run, $20 worth just to get a little bit of fuel in there. Now, we'll jump on the inside, start it up, and see if that gas gauge works. If I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna say no, because there's a few gauges that are not working on this, so I'm gonna say that the gas gauge is one of those that's not gonna do anything. But it's on E. Now yesterday I drove just a little bit and the gauge came up. This one's not moving, but I'm gonna drive a little bit and see if the gauge comes up. Might as well. Let's go.
Well, the good news, our oil temperature did come up. So our temp gauge or coolant temperature, I'm sorry, did come up. Uh, I guess the gauge is working. Our gas gauge did not. Uh, so we don't have a working speedo, uh, no gas gauge, no oil pressure gauge. Engine temperature did move. I don't know how accurate it is. The clock's not working. Okay, let's roll. Now, I thought the tires were rubbing in the back, but I think something else is making that noise. It doesn't sound like a tire rub. I've hit some more other bumps. It sounds like some metal's flexing or something's going on back there. It could be tires, but it didn't sound that familiar. I guess it is tires. That definitely was a tire rub. Just sounded different in the parking lot. There's something dinging around back here in the trunk. Other than that noise, it seems to be running and driving pretty good. You got tight steering, brakes feel good, it's shifting good. The throttle feels good, she got enough pep, enough power. Definitely got the looks. Turn signals, they were working. We've got, look, you can see it popping up right there. Now, when I did the undercarriage shot that I normally do, I couldn't get that light to come on there, so that's probably why they weren't working in that shot. A lot of rubbish in the back. It's stiff in the back too. I'll say the suspension needs a little bit of help back there. I don't understand these turn signals here. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Gotta hit it in that sweet spot. Guys, made it back to the lot. I sure hope you enjoyed this video. Picking out the flaws is coming up at the end, so stick around for that. Thanks guys. this ride chip scratches rust and dents we're gonna be looking for them they cannot hide we're gonna go up in the front here and start look on maplemotors.com for more information we got 100 detailed pictures on there guys you got some damage in the front here it looks like a dent you got a little trim piece missing here looks like it broke Chip there in the corner, right there as well. Coming down this side. Tires look good up and over the fender. Trim's dented. Little spot here on the side. Got some scuff marks at the bottom. Trim's a little bit separated there.
Touch up marks along the edge, bubbles under the paint. Chips on the edge of the door there. Chips on the edge here. Got blemishes all in this paint job. Look at that. How that runs down there. That's under the paint. It's slick too. It's not like it's on top. Little chips. Chip here on the edge. Ding here on your trim. bubble there bubbles in the back here underneath the trim see some more got the cap right there looks good little bubbles on top of the paint there trim sitting up a little bit Slight bubbles up under the vinyl top in the back there. A little wrinkly up under this side too. And across the front. Needs to be stretched out. You can see it's a little wrinkly there. Up on the back. And you got. That's not lined up perfectly. The back bumper on this one, the chrome looks good. come off little bubbles popping up in the jam back here It's like new metal in here. Getting around the lid. Yeah, coming down with it. Got some bubbles on top. Bubbles back here. The ding and the trim. You see it sitting a little high in the middle. down this side see paint line there overspray scratch here the water at the bottom the trims a little separated
chips on the edge of that door. You got chips on the edge here. The door's kind of hanging in the front. chips have been touched up there scratch in the middle of the door Bubble up top here. The scuff there. Chip here. Chips, some water. Over the top, you got some stains. The top just needs to be stretched in a lot of places. You can see that it's got air underneath. Not so much rust, but that's just air. I mean, I'm pushing in on it and it's smooth underneath. It needs to be tightened up. Light scratches here in that back window. All right, let's go ahead and check out our interior. Yeah, and I brought a chamois with me because I did wash the car off. Seed here is in good shape. We got some kind of glue or something on the inside of this little piece that should come off. Get the chamois out. Our carpet on this one looks clean. Pedals look good. Missing the guts in the glove box. this that's cool a little right up on the car here Got to push the clutch in. Tack 
Mac is working on this one. Quiet. Under the hood looks pretty good. Around our edges. Of course, the motor looks great. It's been painted up. It's in good shape. Looks clean. Now as you're coming down with the hood, it'll come down a little bit crooked. There it goes. Then it fell down in place. And it does lock. It's got a little bit of a rattle though. That's the hood itself. Put the pins in because safety first, right? Carefully put the pins in. <laughs> that one went all the way. You see a little bit of haziness on top of this fender. Chips on the back corner. Hazy right here. Got some paint peeling up on the hood. Chips on the edge. Right there in the corner. You like scratches up here. Looks like that's on the black. Also got some chips in the corner up here. You can see some scuffs on the way to it. All right, guys. Again, detailed pictures, financing, and shipping is available at maplemotors.com. Every single week on Monday around 12 o'clock is when we update. So you want to see all the new cars first, you got to be there first. I'm going to go ahead and grab another car, do another test drive. Thanks for watching. See you later.